the CPL kicked off as well. Jimmy, you were busy all weekend, sacrificing your life for the good of Canadian yeah. soccer. The standard of play has definitely gone up. I think they all the teams recruited very well. And you could see there was a huge difference from what we saw last year in that first match. You know, just the energy, enthusiasm, the style of play. Uh, it was a lot better. There was one team that felt struggled a little bit. I mean, Forrest, you mentioned as well, which was Valor. But, you know, for the for the opening match with Ottawa and York, both, both teams played good brand of football, went at it. York were unlucky. They should have got something out of the game. It was good to see Aparicio scoring a, scoring a, a goal for his first match wearing the Ottawa kit against his old club, York. And Twardek, is it Twardek? He ends up scoring for Ottawa, game winner. And now I don't know if you've seen this, but I've never saw this in my life. He's actually ran probably 40 yards and he's gone on his knees to celebrate. <laughs> slid. I know. On artificial turf. <laughs> yeah. His knees <laughs> <laughs> were bleeding. They showed up at Chatter. His skin <laughs> was still on the turf. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I've never was, witnessed it, that in my life. And as soon as it happened, everybody just went, ooh, <laughs> that's not good. But he was so in the moment. And it would have been one of those after in the showers, he must have been in oh. absolute pain. <laughs> But it was a, it was a good result. I think they had four four thousand four and a half thousand people at the game. Yeah, I know we talked about the, the cameras and it just didn't look good, did it? You know, it'd be nice to have the cameras on the other side where you can actually see those Ottawa fans because they do. They've got a good little atmosphere up there and they got good support. Uh, the next match I watched was uh, was Forge and, and Cavs, um, two of the top teams from over the last number of years, going at it toe to toe. Uh, Sergio Camargo getting the first goal with a little flick on. Clever little set play. They went 1-0 up. He runs over to the fans and celebrating with a few Cavs fans that were in the stands and obviously got Forge players wound up a little bit. And Tristan Borges stepped up. He ended up scoring the first his first goal in the 70th minute. Um, and within 10 minutes, Forge found themselves up with Batabanga scoring the second goal. And they ended up seeing that game out coming away with three points. Uh, it was actually Forge's first home uh, home win on a uh, opening day in it's crazy, the isn't it? history of the league. So it was good yeah. for them. Pacific and, and Halifax was another another good game. Both teams kind of canceled each other out. Um, but Pacific found a way to win, which most good teams do. Ended up getting a penalty. Uh, Julian Dunn, big center back, brought down uh, one of the Pacific players. Uh, Blatant penalty and Salouf, who's uh, all eyes will be on him, seeing as Pacific lost Aparicio and they lost Didich. So they lost a, a few key players, and there needs to be someone that's going to step up for this Pacific side. And everybody's counting on Salouf. Salouf, never cool, really sure record. about his energy, though, eh, Jimmy? That player? Yeah, he's just not consistent. No, he's, he's consistent. a bit Salouf. Yeah. Yes, he is a little bit Salouf. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> 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 Sorry, he's very almost sounded sort of like Lezouf. Is Lezouf an egg? Salouf? The Lezouf? There's no better name in CPL than Badabanga. Okay, yeah. so, so good. And then the last match, the last match for the for the weekend was Vancouver FC against Valor. Vancouver FC, they actually uh, they looked very very good um, last season. They they were the youngest team in the league. Um, they competed well, but both of these teams finished seventh and eighth. Um, but Vancouver, what they did was they ended up going out and getting some experienced players. Um, they brought in Dyer. They brought in Paris G. For me, who was probably one of the best fullbacks in the league. They brought Norman Whiteside Jr. in. And David Norman Jr. Where did David Whiteside? Didn't wow. He play for the, you, said, you said Norman Whiteside. Norman Whiteside, yeah. Both names he used to play for Bristol Man United. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, David, David Norman Jr., they brought in another experienced player. So they've actually brought more experienced players into this, this team, and they actually look very, very good. And they came away comfortable winners with a 4-1 win against Valor. Valor just looks like a team that could be struggling this team uh, this, this season again. Um, there's not much that they brought to the table. And it didn't help as well when they had uh, Jordan Faria. He got sent off with two yellow cards. The second one was a, a dive in the box. Ref was just mm -hmm. behind him saw him. Saw him dive and, and sent him off, but uh, I thought that was a good call. Huh? I thought that was a good. I thought that was a good call, Jimmy, and I think you agreed. I heard your your commentary on it as well. Yeah. I mean, he was clearly looking for it. It might have been a little bit of contact, but he just dropped, and the referee was brave enough to say, "No, that's a you tried to cheat me. Here's a yellow card. It's your second. You're off." And I thought yeah. it was. 
it was brave by the referee because I thought it yeah, was right. No, look, I, I gave a I gave a shout out to the referee because the referee was in a very good position. And mm-hmm. I thought he I thought he had a good game, you know, right from the get-go, he set the tone. Um, he wasn't having anything. And I think with Jordan Faria, as soon as he gets the ball, he gets into the box. He was on his way down. He knew he knew David Norman was coming. And mm-hmm. he thought, as soon as I get a little touch, I'm going. But his problem was he saw him out of the corner of his eye and he already started going before the contact was made. Now the ref mm-hmm. was there in literally what three seconds with the yellow card ready to go because his yeah. his his sight was perfect. And to be fair to the referee, it happened again with uh, one of the Valor players, Cantavi. He actually did the exact same thing. And the referee had great sight, was up with the play, and he booked him for, for diving as well. So the ref had a, a very good game, in my, my opinion. Vancouver scored a couple of really nice goals. I'd be surprised if they're not potentially the goal of the week. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think that's... Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be a surprise team this year. They look very, very good. And if they can continue that momentum, I mean, that game would give them an awful lot of confidence. That's yeah, for sure. they play some really, really good stuff. Now, yeah. I, I, would, I was kind of wondering whether it's because, Val, I mean, Valor stood off people. They allowed a lot of space, allowed the uh, time on the ball for defenders even to pick holes and and find uh, outlets down the wide flanks. And I thought they they moved the ball incredibly well, but they'll, they'll have better, better teams to play against, obviously. But they, I was pretty yeah. impressed. Well, for that Vancouver side as well, I mean, Valor and Vancouver, they both struggled last season to score goals. They mm-hmm. were the, through the worst in the league. Um, and for this Val- uh, Vancouver side now to score four games, that's the most goals that they've scored in their history. And four goals in one match. So they've got a lot of firepower. They've, they've played some really good football at times, scored some great goals. So you're hoping this is going to – be a start for a great season for them because it'd be nice to see one of these two teams because none of them have been in the playoffs as well. And Valor's been around from day one. So mm-hmm. I don't know how they're going to get into the playoffs, but this Vancouver side, they, they look the real deal. Jimmy, you I give you it. two side thumbs for your CPL roundup. It was very good. Very, it was very good. It was excellent. Thank you. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we had a few people reach out about um, the whole camera angles and why the fans aren't put on the far side. We'll, we'll, we'll speak to the CPL about that and find out. The mm. I, I, I gotta think that in certain stadiums, if you're looking at York, they don't have a state uh, st- uh, stand on the other side, so there's nowhere to put the cameras. They're gonna have to put them up on towers. That's gonna be incredibly expensive, so they're not going to do that. But when it's, you got your season opener against uh, Ottawa against um, York, yeah. and y- you're watching the game, and it comes on, and they're all out on the field, and the little Volkswagen thing brings the match ball up and the, the camera scans back and all you see is empty seats. And you would never know watching that game there was 4,000 people there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just so it it just looks really really bad. And I, I saw on social media some people were like was was public not allowed to watch this game and so can they get the cameras on the other side because they well, really the need to? Why not move the fans? Yeah. Then you have some concessions issues. You know, I don't know the reason. There's got to be a reason for it. it has to because CPL is aware of it. They know optics sure. is so important for this league. It's got to look good on TV. It has yeah, to. They, I I agree. They've got to do something because it, the the other thing is with this Ottawa setup, the stadium is actually beautiful. It's a really nice stadium, and the four thousand that sit in the bottom row, it looks great. It really does look good. And they've got a good atmosphere there. But it's a shame mm-hmm. that they can't get the cameras on the other side because I think it would uh, be a hell of a lot more attractive than what it was. It just looked terrible. Because you it's think, like, as you're, Sh- Sharms, as you're talking about, like, optics, they're massive. So they talked about attendance. Maybe they exceeded expectations on the weekend or just had a, a good bump there compared to past years. But you wouldn't be able to tell, as to Craig's point about watching it on whether you saw a clip on social media or watching it on one soccer like you you have to think like the 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 balance of that or if you're looking at the pros and cons like just to pay you're out of pocket to get an extra camera there to perhaps show the occasional clip of the fans on the opposite side maybe you're not going to be able to move the game camera but like you get another one in there so that you can just kind of inject and and provide a counterpoint to the, the the camera that's filming the game to show like look it it, it is lively like people are here there there's a good atmosphere because otherwise not everybody is diving into it the way that we are looking yeah, for more content it's, like it's if you want to pull TV, more though, fans right? yeah but you want to pull more fans optics really matter and if people really are does. looking at that and thinking 
oh, I maybe want to go see what this is all about. Maybe they're less inclined to do so because it doesn't look like uh, a great party. It doesn't look like a great vibe. Exactly. You can't be trouble. You can't be with TV. You can't be switching camera angles and sides. It doesn't work, right? The way you watch the game, it's got to be from shot essentially on the same side. Maybe from a tactical standpoint, replays. Yes, absolutely, you can do that. You can't be mm -hmm. switching side to side. It's got to be shot from the same side. So, can you not move the fans? I wonder. Is that an easier solution here than the cameras? But listen, I, I'll re I'll reach out to the CPL, and I'm sure they'll they'll give us a reason for it. But a lot of these um, stadiums run where the fans go, right? It's not CPL, right? It's the stadium manage themselves as well. So, I don't know. We'll look into it, but I'm sure they are aware of it. And uh, at some point, there'll be a solution because you want to see fans. We, we, we watched the season without fans, remember? During the pandemic, and it looked like shit. Even with the cardboard cutouts. Remember those cardboard cutouts? You could, like, purchase a cardboard cutout for yourself in some stadiums. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it feels like the real thing now. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Jesus. Ah, uh, halcyon days, eh?